My three kids, they're all, they're all acting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, they're, they're, Ruby, my daughter, and Sonny and Louie, my two sons, they've all started acting of their own volition. And, you know, not, we didn't, my wife's an actress, so we're, you know, we, they had no chance, basically. <laughs> what, can I, what, are, what are they going to do? Please welcome to the stage, Andy Circus. All for you. Welcome. Oh, I'll take one of those. Hey, everybody. Hey, hey. It's so nice to have you. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. I'm really, really loving Pittsburgh. What a great city you've got. It's amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. For first time here? Absolutely, 100%, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you do a lot of comic cons? I mean, I, do you know this? Uh, I have not done in the past, but over the last few years, I've I've gradually been doing a couple more. So you know, I mean, not a lot, but but a few more. Yeah. So so I'm enjoying them. It's really lovely meeting all of you guys. You know, the fa so the fandom is just so important, and you you are so passionate about the projects, and it really really helps us to kind of keep an eye on, on, on what we're doing and, and keep, you know, keep our game up. So we, we really thank you so much for your, your constant support and, and Gotta give it up. all your great goodwill. You're amazing. You're amazing. It's once again, welcome to Pittsburgh. But I got to ask, what exactly is motion capture acting? I hate to sound like pretty much of a novice here, but he actually says, oh, it's mocap. I go, mocap, I have no idea what you're talking about. Okay, so, well, it doesn't, it's not really called mocap anymore. It used to be called mocap. Yeah, it's, it is. It's, it's, it's now called performance capture. And so very, oh. very briefly, I can tell you the, the, the kind of the history of it. It actually came out of the medical industry. It was a way of uh, analyzing uh, gait and, and movement and physicality after injury. Um, so they used to put these little sensors on, say, if you broke your ankle, you know, you could then put these little uh, sensors which would then be tracked by cameras that could just tell if you're uh, back in alignment or not, if you were running. Or, so so or something uh, an occupational therapist or a physical therapist would yeah, use. Yeah, th th that's where it came from originally. And then, and then um, back in the day... Uh, Let me get you a little more volume. Oh, sure. Then, so... Um, uh, <laughs> go ahead. So then, the, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Great. So then, so 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 then it, it got it became used in the in the in the film industry as a way of tracking performers. Well, actually, it started off in the video game industry first for tracking martial artists or tennis players or you know for, to getting to get the four footballers to get the proper movement. Um, and then the film industry took it over. And so what it is basically is you put on a suit. And then you have a full set of markers that go all over your body. And then you have cameras in 360 degrees. And that each of these are like tiny little GPSs, if you like, you know. So, and they're joints in your body. So every single movement that you make can literally be tracked. And, and, and you've got, because the cameras are all pointed at them, they, they become a play, you know, a fig, a, 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 an item in space that is related to, to lots of these other markers. Okay, so so then so that's motion capture, and you could basically put a, a, a motion capture suit on a dog, or in fact, you know, we do in the film industry sometimes horses or those movements. You know, you can just put these tiny little markers, and, and it tracks the movement beautifully and very accurately. But that's not the same as as an actor's performance. That's that's only one part of it, tracking the movement. So, for instance, when we created Gollum. You know, I, I, I did all the physical movements, and that was very accurately tracked. But the facial capture is 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 what then makes it a, another takes it onto another level, and that was um, something that uh, you know has grown over the years, um, where you where where you're you're now having these tiny little facial markers with a head-mounted camera that can then track every single facial expression. So so the combination of that plus recording the audio at the same time just means you get the whole performance in one hit. And then, then over the years, the way it's progressed is that it goes from being just inside a studio, but, but actually shooting on location. So you can actually go out and film in the wilds and any, any sort in the, you know, in snow up or up in, up in the mountains or in anywhere. And, and, um, it's very cold wearing one of these suits, I have to tell you, but, um, but it, but yeah, yeah. 
Um, and but but that's that's the principle. So that's that's really the journey over the last two decades from from um, from motion capture to performance capture. Is it an uncomfortable? Uh... No, you completely forget about it. I mean, it is. You know, a lot of people think that it's not the same as acting normally, you know, conventionally with a costume. But the only difference is, like a costume, when you're, when you're acting, you know, you choose your costume very carefully and you, you know, the, the shoes that you wear, the kind of the heels they've got or the way that, you know, you might choose to be wearing sneakers for a character or, you know, very tidy, smart brogues for another character or whatever. You know, those, those things can really influence you and, and help you. But so you have to do some of that work um, when you're wearing a motion capture suit. Um, although you can, the, you can actually, for instance, uh, if you want the character to be heavier uh, in a motion capture suit, you can wear weights or you can... And, and when you're going through the rehearsal process of working with a motion capture suit, you can actually see on screen the character that you're playing and it's like a magic mirror. You lift up your arm and then... But you see the, the actual character lifting up their arm up and down. So, so you, so, so you might want to play. If you're playing a character that is carrying a lot of weight, then you can actually. We, we experiment with all sorts of ways of making the the physics of it actually work really well. So it's like a, a green screen kind of suit. <clears throat> no, they're normally grey. Grey. They're normally grey, actually. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, it, it's really over the last. I would say over the last ten years, it's become very much main mainstream uh, way of making films and of course it's it's used not only in film production uh, but it's also used in what we call previs previs which is um, you know in visual effects films when you're trying to block out a scene uh, you don't know how you're going to shoot it on on a real location you can actually build the whole world in a video game environment and then have the actors um, you know, come in in motion capture suits and work it, work it, block it all out there, so that when you actually get on location, you've already done a lot of the planning. Wow. You know, so it's so it's a, an incredibly useful filmmaker's tool, and and it really, really helps. Um, I mean, it's 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 very much going to be part of the future. How did you get involved in this? It seems like uh... yeah, well, it, there was a particular project which. Um, you know, I, I'm not allowed to talk about. Of course not. Uh, <laughs> but I, you will know what it is. Um, you know, and that and that that project was, um, you know, the the director involved w was very keen to really start to push this techno technology forward because up up until then, I mean, there was a there, there was a sort of a real break in the difference between. CG characters, monsters, things you didn't really care that much about, and then characters that you can emotionally relate to. And for that, you would need, you know, it, it, so beforehand, the actors who were imagining these CG creatures would have to look at a tennis ball on a stick, and, and that would be, they would have to, it would just be all about their imagination. But, but this particular role that I played, which you all know what I'm talking about, <laughs> um, uh, you know, um, basically, allowed the other actors to act with another actor on set wearing a motion capture suit and play that character so so it's 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 a, it really was a big transition from as i say from cg from cg characters to to sorry to cg kind of monsters to cg characters that you that you really mm -hmm. connect with so back it up farther how did you get involved in acting in the first place so I um, I had no intentions of becoming an actor when I when I was growing up. I I, I was a painter and I wanted to do graphic design and I I, lo I loved art and I studied visual. I went to um, a university in in the UK called uh, Lancaster University and and I went there specifically to study visual art. But what I didn't realise was that you had to do another subject in the first year, and so. There was a very good theatre studies department who kind of had an experimental theatre that you could change the auditorium around and build sets in different ways, and I was really interested in that. So I got involved with the theatre studies department, and then I gradually was in, asked to be um, to act in various different plays along along the way in my first year. And by the end of my first year, I just thought this is what I want to do. There was one play I did which was called Gotcha by Barry Keefe, and uh, 
and it was it was I, I had to really go deep into this character and and uh, it just made me go this is what I've got to do this is this is uh, this has completely changed the direction of my life I then had to phone my parents up and say uh, you know what I don't think I, I want to study visual arts which was horrific to them in the first place uh, I want to become an actor <laughs> and they were like you know, it was just like, they, yeah, yeah, they were like horrified. They were like, what, it, what has gone wrong with our son? You know, it was literally. Um, so, so, yeah, it was, it, it was a kind of, which I'm quite glad of, in, actually, at the end of the day, because there's nothing like your parents putting barriers in front of you to make sure that you push forward in the thing that you really want to do, I think. Reverse psychology really works. Do you still, do you still paint at all? I do. I love painting. I really, I, I absolutely adore painting. I don't have that much time for it because I'm doing a lot of directing now. So, so all my time is taken up, um, you know, evolving new projects that I'm working on and and uh, uh, or shooting. You know, so so and and you and if anybody out of interest, how many people here paint? I, I'm sure a lot of you do. I'm sure there's, yeah. I mean, you you will all know that that it's not something that you can just just pick up for a little you know you have yeah. to get back into the zone you have to kind of really if you're really going to do it properly you have to to sink sink a lot of time into it which i'd love to do and maybe in the future i will do you still have some of your paintings around uh no because my wife won't have any of my paintings <laughs> up, up, uh at all not any uh because they're a bit too gruesome what kind of uh, style you're dark saying? dark I mean, well they're kind of they're kind of um uh, uh, sort of ab uh abstract characters and also uh, quite, um, yeah, quite dark themed uh, kind of environments which are sort of surreal and, uh, yeah, dark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the sort of thing that actually you probably want to gaze at all day long. So I got to ask you, during COVID, you read the entire book, The Hobbit, online for charity. Can you tell us a bit about that? How that even came to be and what's the charity? So, uh, we, yeah, as everybody was feeling, you know, um, during COVID, it was it was it was a horrible time, and I just felt what you know what a lot of people were feeling trapped. A lot of people were feeling, um, you know, they weren't allowed to go out, or they were trapped, or or just it kind of in their heads were trapped. And I, I just felt it. I just thought, is there something? Is there a story that I can read? that would then give parents perhaps who have got kids around them all the time and have not had a break you know in those long days when you couldn't get out um so i thought well what if i did a, a reading and and then the hobbit sprang to mind because it was just such a an amazing adventure story it took you out it took you beyond and and was about journeying the whole story of the mm -hmm. hobbit is about journeying so so i i i, I thought it would be and and I was very closely associated at the time with a, with a charity called Best Beginnings and also our National Health Service who were doing amazing work. I wanted to raise some money for, for them because they were just doing extraordinary work. So, so, I, so, um, so I set up this reading and, uh, and it was great. It was, it was fantastic. We got a lot of support from the Tolkien estate and they said, we'd love you to do it. Um, so I did it, it was a non-stop all in one day reading from I think it was it lasted 11 hours and two minutes and I had I think I had um, I had about two I had four two minute breaks in that during that during the reading of it I don't know if any of you heard it did any, any of you hear it not one of you oh my goodness oh no <laughs> oh, yeah, a few. Um, so yeah the, the, so during the course of it of course you go a little bit stir crazy and uh, there were whole passages that I read and I know, I mean, of course, I know The Hobbit very, very well. And uh, but but there were whole passages that I read, and then I got to the end of the paragraph, and it would go, you know, said Gandalf, and I'd and I'd been reading it as another character. But it was just I was, I was delirious by about halfway through. It was, <laughs> it was I, I was I was you know it was it, but it was it was live. It was it was a live reading that lasted yeah eleven hours and. Uh, was there a visual component to it, or just no? no. Well, I was on screen. I was oh, on, screen. on screen. I was. It was a Zoom. You know, it was a Zoom filmed um, re reading. Uh, I mean, I loved doing it. it all, although it was before starting, it was like, wow, here we go. I was terrified the night before. It was just like, boy, am I going to get through this? You know. Um, but it, it was. It was really. Yeah, it was exciting to do. Great challenge. It was a huge challenge. Yeah, yeah. It was an armchair marathon. 
How long, how many people you think tuned in out of curiosity? Oh, I, I know a lot of I know a lot of people did because there were the, 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 we managed to raise uh, like a quarter of a million dollars for, for more actually for, wow. the, for, for the National Health Service. So, so it was it, it was it was it was yeah it was well atten- it was well attended. Yeah. If you could pick another book the next time, what would that possibly be? War and Peace. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> something easy. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, wow. Um, I mean, do yeah. you read a lot? I do. I do read a lot. Yeah, I'm not as much as I'd like actually, because because most of the time it's I'm I'm working on films, and, and I, unless I'm doing research reading for those films. Um, it's you know it's it, it, I, I I haven't read like a novel for ages because I just because it's always associated with the work that I'm doing so it's generally yeah it's research mm-hmm. yeah so I want to go back to the, the there was a student radio station you were part of in the 1980s we're going back to school and um, you did air radio plays so that sounds almost similar to kind of like the whole Hobbit thing doing a a reading uh, how did that come about and can you remember any specific plays you might have done. Um, that, so that that was closely associated, really, with the the Nuffield Theatre, which was the the theatre that I was telling you about. So we would do excerpts from plays that that we were doing at the time, and uh, you know there, there were a whole there were a whole range of of plays from Shakespeare through to uh, you know c- contemporary playwrights, um, but and Bertolt Brecht and all sorts all sorts. I mean, a whole myriad of different ones. Um, you were allowed to pick them. You were in charge of that. Yeah. No, I wasn't. I wasn't in charge of it. We we sort of collectively um, we, we chose the ones that we were keen on doing. You know, but it was yeah. It was it it was a brilliant. It was a brilliant university because it was it was very progressive. It allowed you to you were allowed to do this thing called an independent studies degree, so you could sort of construct your own degree. And um, I chose that because I, I had so many different varying interests in different areas of of both set design and, and it's interesting, really, because uh, uh, so my, I think my degree in the end was called theatre design and movement, oh. which, which were, were wow. actually nearly all the things that I've ended up doing in my life's, in my life, uh, my life's. <laughs> lives. My, lives. My several lives. My many, many different lives with lots of different characters. Um, actually, it does feel like that. It does. That's the other thing about acting is that you do feel that. And one of the great things about it is that you get to start again every time you play a character. Mm-hmm. You feel like you're reinvestigating a part of yourself or or looking at a part of yourself that you've never looked at before mm-hmm. and it, it does it does feel like you've lived many lives um you know which is which is which is kind of interesting um what was i talking about theater place the, the, the other th- yeah so so yeah so so this 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 um university was was fantastic for that it allowed you to really plug into your the things that you are passionate about mm-hmm. and 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 study those rather than just following one curriculum mm-hmm. you know so right now i'd like to see if we can get some questions from the audience i'm going to be the i want to be the police guy here okay I've got to make sure we abide by all the rules because of the union strike no mentioning any specific uh movie tv show uh how many people have a question head over to that wall where kyle is and you know, nobody's going to put you in question jail, but I will shut it down if it's not appropriate. All right? Are we good with that? Oh, yeah, totally, totally. Okay. So I'll be the bad guy. You'll hear a loud buzzing sound. <laughs> All right, first question, name and question. My name is Carol, and I just want to know, it's been... Well over 20 years since Lord of the Rings. Uh, <clears throat> no, go, but, All right. It's since a certain since, fantasy since a certain, yeah, adventure. Since, Please. Si- since that. And I just want to know, do you get sick and tired of people mentioning it to you? Or do you, are you comfortable with that legacy? A hundred percent. I mean, I am so, you know, proud. Everyone is very proud of the work that they did on that. And, and, the, and, it, and it's... The fact that people go. still have loved the, you know, the, those projects, I, I, I've, you know, it, it, and, and still are passionate about them, and still remember them very fondly, or grew up with them. I mean, I, I'm literally every day, someone will come up to me and talk to me about about those films. So, so there isn't a day that passes where, where, where that isn't the case, or talk to me about the character that I played that I can't mention, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> 
you know, and and um, and so and 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 yeah, so I so I so I'm I'm you know, it's it's a huge part of my life and has been, and uh, I'm yeah, I'm inc- if you're going to be part of a, a a franchise, that that was certainly one to be proud of, you know. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, next question. All right, I'm Lauren, and my question is, you've done a lot of mocap, and you've played yourself in things before. Do you watch your own movies, and do you have a preference of seeing yourself either playing a creature character or playing as yourself? That's, oh, that's a great that's question. A great yeah, very good question. Um, I, You know, the fact of the matter is, and this is absolutely true, I never think of them as any different i don't kind of go oh well that's you know a motion captured role that's a more conventional on-screen role i don't i don't see them like that i just see them all as characters and 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 some of them i think i could have done better and some of them i think you know i judge them in different ways but i don't i never think i've never thought of performance capture as any different to acting so so it's just it's just you either wearing a conventional costume and makeup or a, d- a digital costume and makeup, in effect, really. Um, so, so it, it, because uh, because as an actor, the process is exactly the same in, in terms of climbing into the character and you know walking in that character's shoes or feet or claws or whatever. <laughs> Great question. Hi, my name's Caitlin. Um, I've just been wondering since you've done so much acting and. Um, now you're starting to do more directing. Do you have a preference for whether you like doing acting more, directing more, and why, if you do? I, I think, as I say, you know, that, that story about where I started off, I think I've always wanted to tell stories uh, visually, whether it be painting, whether it be, you know, I've always had that in me. And, and so, so, you know, after, after kind of reaching my mid-30s and, and thinking... And, you know, I'd already, you know, even when I went to do, down to New Zealand to do that film that we're not allowed to talk about, um, it, uh, that I'd already started planning to, to direct and started making short films and so on. So it's always been part of the plan alongside, alongside um, acting. And I love them both. And actually what is brilliant is, is and, and, you know, I feel very privileged to do, is to go between the two. Because there's, there's, there's nothing better than just a sink sinking your mind and head into a character after you've been working on a film for two years and you've and you've been you know helming it and living it's a difficult very very all-consuming they both are all-consuming in different ways but but directing is you have a lot of ups and downs with directing you know getting the project on up on its feet getting it financed getting you know getting the script right getting everything right you know it's it's a monumental task getting a film made and it and it costs it really costs you you know i mean you're doing something you love so i'm not it's first world problems in a sense but but it does take it out of you and with acting i always feel recharged because again it's like it's entering into something you come at the you come into the whole process at a very um you know late stage you come in as you're about to shoot and then you go away and you forget about the rest of it so you're purely dealing with the character so i love the kind of exercising different muscles to answer your question thank you hi there hi Uh, my name is jonathan Hi, Jonathan. Um, so, two quick questions. So, uh, what was it like seeing your son in in a movie a couple years ago? Oh, yeah. It's, well, all I've, I mean, my three kids they're all they're all acting. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, they're, they're, Ruby, my daughter, and Sonny and Louie, my two sons, they've all started acting of their own volition, and you know, not we didn't. My wife's an actress, so we're you know, we, they had no chance basically. <laughs> what can I, what, are, what are they going to do? You know, be pl- you know. <laughs> you know, we didn't. We, you know, they just grew up on film sets, on backstages of theatre, and so on and so forth. But you know, they we always encourage them to study other things. Um, it's not answering your question, but um, yes, it was wonderful to see to, to see to see all of them really take take off and do their own thing. And and I, you know, they, it, it's not easy. I think for young actors of of who have parents who've been in the profession a long time. Um, you know, to, to strike out on their own. So, I, so it's it's you know we we're there to support them, but we but we also it's very very important for them to go off and do their own thing and find their own way path. You know, so so it's it's a 
an interesting one as a parent and also as a, a mentor slash kind of, you know, more experienced person who's been in the profession, it, you know, it, to guide, but also then allow them to go off and do their thing. But whenever we see them, both Lorraine and I, we're, we're always... You know, they're, 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 you know, we, we of course think we're, they're really great, of course, you know. <laughs> and then I, my next question is for you. Uh, as far as like your performance capture, now when you're, especially like facial expressions, because everything that you do is so emotive, so expressive, do you have to overact or do over emote um, for the, the technology to pick up that performance? No, it's, it's in fact the opposite. It teaches you, actually. Performance capture teaches you to do less and less and less. So, so for, a, um, for, I can't mention the characters, but, the, but, but for a certain character, uh, you know, it, it re, I, what I really learned through, through, through a trilogy of films, which was not the other <laughs> film uh, that we're not supposed to talk about, uh, that character that I played from from I played from birth through to death uh, really taught me how how important it is that to that 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 performance capture is all about stillness it, and and it, and and it tracks it really does track your your emotional thought that is going on beneath the surface of whatever facial expression so it's not just about pull you know it's not pantomiming or kind of you know pulling pulling expressions it's if you're thinking and feeling it that will come through the performance capture thank you so much pleasure hi my name's shelby hey shelby um so i was wondering you've been kind of in this unique position of you play a character very well in a very well-known franchise taking a break from it, and then going back to the same character. When you realized that you were going to be going back to doing that, was there ever like a fear in your mind of, oh, is it going to be the same thing it was last time? Or was it just, oh, yeah, I got this? Um, it's always, look, whenever you start filming on a new project, and especially with a gap, you know, of, 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 a, of well, it must have been about seven years or eight years, I can't remember what it is now. Um, but, but no, it was, it was it, no, you're, you're, you're still, the nerves come back and you're still thinking, you know, can I do this? Am I going to get there? Is it, is it going to feel as fresh and instinctive and, uh, you know, am I going to find, find the character again? You, you know, I mean, it was slightly different with, with the character that you're talking about because, you know, I, I, I sort of, he, that character lives with me in a never-ending way. I mean, I, I kind of <laughs> can't, can't really escape him, you know. Uh, but, but even so, going back to a project, you, you are starting from scratch again to a certain extent. Thank you. And just to let you know, we have less than 10 minutes, so we probably won't get through the line. You're headed back to your table after this, or you have I, a photo I, op? I think, I, I think I'm doing photo op. He has a photo it? op. Thank you. The, 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 my, my but <laughs> but you're, over at the, you're over in the hotel, am I correct? You're in the... He's in the hotel. So to, to get to yes. his booth, you actually have to go over to the Doubletree Hotel. That's where your booth is. That's where the booth is, yeah. But the, the photo op is over here. Yes. But let's try and get a few more questions in, and I want to thank you real quick. Thanks. Sure. Speed round. My name is Ryan. Um, when you first started directing, were there any directors that you worked with in the past that offered advice or influenced your style? Oh, I mean, Peter Peter Jackson is just like is is wow. is is just such a phenomenal director and been a mentor to me for years, you know. So so and I, I, I and before I even got involved with working with him, I, I I was so admired his movies and they really spoke to me in a in a pr quite profound way. So 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 yes, that I mean, I, I a lot, but there are lots of directors also that have influenced me. Um, you know, um, Mike Lee, the British film director, um, just in terms of character development, he's extraordinary. Uh, he was extraordinary to work with as an actor. Um, and, uh, you know, Matt Reeves is the most incredible director and, and, and actor's director, as well as being a visionary. You know, the, the, I feel very lucky to have worked with, well, and Chris Nolan, you know, I mean, incredible directors. Yep. Hi, I'm Jason. Um, Hi, Jason. I was, I was wondering, what was the hardest role that you've ever done? The hardest role? Um, wow. I, I think, I think uh, not because I can't really talk about the, <laughs> the characters kind of out there, it's sort of, but, I, but in, in an out there way, I think, I think the hardest character I played is one which not many of you would have seen, but actually w w was it was an independent film, and 
Um, and it was it was a character that I was sort of slightly, it was, it was so close to myself that in fact, I realized that it's so much harder for, you know, some actors are really great at playing versions of themselves. So they re they're able to release a lot of emotion. They're able to play, you know, we all know actors we've seen on screen a thousand times who, who just play themselves, but they play them in such, themselves in such a way as we learn a little bit more about them, each character they play. Whereas for me, I've always felt much more liberated as an actor, kind of the further away the character is from me. And, and so this character that, that I found most difficult was actually one that was incredibly close to me. And I, and I didn't have, I don't know, I watched my wife Lorraine, who, who, who is one of those actors who's very, very natural and plays a version of herself, I would say, more, more often than not. And, and there's something very bold about that. I mean, you know, when you're climbing into a character that's further away, it allow, it, for me, the transformative process allows me to find freedom and a freedom of expression. And I think that was the hardest thing, playing something close to myself in, 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 yeah, in, in a way. We have time for just two more questions. Sorry, guys. Sorry. But you can go over to the hotel and ask them there. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Hi, I'm Lori. Um, so I just wanted to ask you, I know that you talked about how um, you know acting is kind of that um, breath of fresh air after directing just because, you know, it takes a lot more. But from an acting standpoint, as far as, you know, playing your characters and doing the performance capture, do you find that that lends itself to what, you know, your directing style and how you go about um, directing a project and actors? Um, I, as I say, I think, I think the, I, the performance capture, I wouldn't say it specifically helps me anymore in, in terms of direction. Um, because as I was saying earlier, you know, the, the performance capture and, and conventional acting for me are all one. You know, they've, they've, I've never seen them as anything different. So, so it's, it's, so when I direct actors in a performance capture suit, I direct them exactly the same as I would as if I were directing them, you know, or scenes in, you know, in, in a more conventional way. Um, so I hope, I hope if that makes sense. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. And last question. Hey, Andy. My name is JJ. Hey, uh, JJ. Huge fan of all your performance capture work. Obviously, everything you do has been great. Uh, one of my favorite films, probably one of your lesser known <clears throat> roles, not to mention any names. Um, but I just want to know what it was like working with uh, David Bowie. Uh, oh, yeah. D David Bowie was just an amazing, amazing human being and such, you know what, he was so humble and so down to earth and funny and we, we had a ball. And I had, I had a lot to, to do with, with, with him and, and it was, he was just extraordinary. He's such an artist, he was such an artist and had so many interests. So we, we, we talked a lot when we were off set and, you know, there were many kind of things that, that we, agreed on and just in terms of you know the in terms of the freedom of artistic expression and the ability to to step into into different ways of, of telling a story whether it be through music or or, or or painting or through you know film or you know stage and and yeah he was remarkable and but but I have to say hilarious as well really funny great sense of humor and just constantly self, very self-deprecating, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, he, uh, he's a hilarious guy. Well, thank you so much for taking some time, Andy. Really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Worked so out pretty much. good. Thanks. Thanks give everybody. it up, Andy Circus. He's over on the double tree. Please, I'd hang out with him if I didn't have to do this. Take care. Thank you, sir. Keep it going, Andy Circus. This is Ross Marquand, and you are watching Fandom Spotlight, which is awesome. So like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and have fun, and follow your fandom.